So an alternative to starting by seed is going by cutting. So the key to cuttings is to have a good healthy uh, so-called mother plant. And the mother plant is a plant that's been maintained in a vegetative state for a period of time, has lots of branches off of it. Uh, so again, we want to find a good healthy plant. Uh, and make sure that it's conducive or able to be cloned. So there's certain plants that don't like to be taken as cuttings, especially really thin uh, branches. So if we're taking a cutting off any plant, whether it's tomato or cannabis or what have you, we suggest around three to six inches tall and, and you know, roughly uh, more than an eighth of an inch wide. So here we have some citronella plants. Uh, what we suggest is cutting it off the mother plant, which I've done earlier, and then cutting it again under water. And that way we prevent a so-called air embolism uh, and an air blockage from getting in the plant. So I'm just going to cut the base of the cutting about a quarter of an inch on the way up. So I've done that under water. I'm going to let it sit there for a second. And to encourage rooting, we strongly recommend using a rooting hormone. And we have many different kinds out there. Uh, this is the Roots Gel. It has a built-in fungicide. It's economical, works well. There's also powders and liquids and also other gels. There's also alcohol-based uh, rooting hormones too. So all rooting hormones generally have a compound in it called butyric acid, and that butyric acid causes the initial root to start. So once the roots have start, the rooting hormone doesn't feed the plant. So basically we just need the rooting hormone to initiate rooting. So we don't need a lot of it, we just need a thin layer at the base of the cutting. So I'm going to take two cuttings and I'm going to use a, a jiffy pellet and also a rockwell cube. So here this rockwell cube, which is a mineral fiber that's been made for horticultural purposes. It holds even amounts of water just like a sponge does. So here we've been pre-soaking it uh, just to condition it, get off some of the lime that's on the rock wool. Uh, so again, it's just a good inert medium. It transplants well into any other medium, including soil. Uh, so you can see there's a little hole there that's ready for the cutting. Uh, so again, I'm just going to keep it moist in a tray. I'm not going to leave it in any standing water at all. So again, I've already taken the extra cut off the plant. I'm going to uh, dip it into a small amount of rooting hormone. So we suggest taking some of the hormone out of the bottle or its container so we don't contaminate it with the possibly contaminated cutting. So here I'm just going to hold it in the, uh, the gel for three to five seconds. Make sure there's a thin layer at the bottom, which indeed there is. Again, we don't need to glob it on there or have a whole bunch. We just need a little bit uh, there. So I'm going to make the hole a little bit bigger in the rock hole cube because my cutting's a little bit wider and gently insert it into the rock hole there and firm it up and pinch the rock hole around it so that it holds into place and put it into our dome. And similarly with the Jiffy pellet would be the same idea. So here I'm just going to cut some of these side branches off that we don't need. Put it under water again, give it a quick cut, and add it to the hormone again. Hold for a few seconds, up to five seconds. Now I've got a good amount on there. Uh, so these Jiffy pellets you got to make a little hole there so you can use a pencil or some kind of clean instrument rather than your scissors like I did there. But, and again, put it in about a quarter of an inch and make sure there's no air pockets or anything. So gently snug up some of the jiffy material around it. So we're going to put it into our tray. And again, use a propagation dome just like we would with seeds and we're going to put it under a, a low level of light like we've done here. Uh, depending how warm it is in your environment, we also suggest using a heat mat. So this is a heat mat here that will keep the temperature 10 to 20 degrees above the ambient room temperature. And that really speeds along the development of cuttings and seeds. So especially in a, a cold basement or a cool area. So again, we'll leave it under the, uh, the lights for 18 hours. 
and uh, take this d uh, dome off once a day to get some fresh air in there. So we can do that by removing it or using these uh, built-in vents. After seven to 10 days, uh, after the roots form, we can start taking this dome off for longer periods of time and harden it off. So anything that we do with seedlings and cuttings, we want to slowly introduce to any changes to the factors affecting their growth. So including the temperature, uh, nutrient strength, and the amount of water. So we're going to slowly uh, bridge these or transition them from these uh, uh, propagation lights to a stronger light over a number of days. And so whether it's you're introducing it to sunlight or a stronger light, you just kind of want to step it up. Same thing with food. Once we've got a healthy amount of uh, roots coming through the bottom, we can start giving it a quarter strength nutrient solution and then slowly build that up over a number of weeks. The same thing with watering. We want to give them a little bit of water at the beginning and treat them like a puppy and kit kitten and slowly introduce them to more and more food and water. Uh, we don't want to overfeed them or uh, change uh, the temperature or humidity drastically. And after that, uh, they're able to, uh, you harden them off, they'll uh, take off outside and uh, flourish all year.